The CEO of Fair Day Future, Karsten Breitfeld, is going to be here in just a couple of minutes to talk to me about something that we've been wondering for a long time. Why is this so much easier for Tesla, Biden, Fair Day Future, and just electric car startups to do electric cars so much better than this multi-billion dollar legacy manufacturers that have decades and decades of experience? And the answer is actually pretty complicated. As a matter of fact, I think Karsten is very, one of the very few people who who can shine the most light on this because he's been on both sides right he's the guy who brought us bmw i8 he was in charge of that program and bmw an executive for a long time then he founded biden and was one of the uh, biden's co-founders and now he is the ceo of fair day future but he's also one more thing now which is a contributor to this channel that's right this is the premiere of the segment we're calling well actually he picked this name Karsten says go with Karsten Breinfeld and I've I've had him on the show many times especially throughout his times with a Biden uh, I, I like talking to him but also the knowledge that he has especially on this topic is absolutely amazing of course as you know I've added a few monthly contributors uh, Karsten is one of them of course there is Sandy Monroe uh, Roger Atkins and Rich Rebuilds uh, many new reasons to subscribe to this channel if you already have go ahead and click on a bell notification icon on so you don't miss anything moving forward but today Karsten and I are going to talk about why in the world is it so hard to make electric cars if you've been making cars for so many years. Um, of course, a quick reminder, also this video and this channel is sponsored by Climate Exchange. The Tesla raffle is back. If you win, if you're one of those lucky ones who win, you will be able to pick from any Tesla, any configuration up to $195,000. Uh, so there is a link in the description of this video where you can enter. But even if you don't win, you'll still be contributing to a great costs and great organization so go to carbonraffle.org to get your ticket all right without further ado this is my conversation with karsten in the premiere of his own segment on this channel karsten says go well welcome to your own segment on my channel i'm so excited uh, I, you've been on so many times i figured we might as well schedule you monthly <laughs> um well you know the, the 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 first topic i want to talk to you about something that i mean you know probably more than anybody we see so many startups including faraday future do a lot of stuff with very little money you know i mean i know a one billion dollars is a lot for me personally to go shopping but for a, starting a car company it's not that much and yet, startups have done so much more. And these big, fat companies like, you know, we just had Ford unveil their car and everything. Why do you think that is? I mean, you work for BMW and you've been part of the little, you know, let's try to go electric type. Of, <laughs> and then you ran, you know, Biden and now Fair the Future. Why is it so hard for bigger companies? So first of all, Alex, it's really a pleasure for me to talk to you every time we do it. It's uh, exciting and uh, you're always asking the good questions, I would say. Try. So uh, yeah, this is a really good question. And um, the, the point is, if you look to big companies, big companies try to build everything into a perfect process. To some degree, this might sound a bit strange, they try to get independent from people. And if you build uh, things into a process, it's not so important who is doing which part of the process. Uh, it's very stable um, and it can assure some quality, but it takes time, it costs a lot of money, and it prevents you from being fast and being innovative. So in a startup, it's completely different. In a startup, everything depends from people. From people having the right idea, from people taking decisions, which might be right or wrong. If they are wrong, the startup goes down. If they are right, they can become something great. This is the biggest difference. So you're saying you can do more with less people because there are less people. Correct. Uh, so if, if you want to run a successful startup, you need the right people from a mindset, from a capability, and have, which have a broader view. So they re can really decide something. Uh, whereas decisions in big companies are run through committees and through a big number of, of, of different steps to, to do the right thing. Now, tell me, I, there's also a big obstacle for the legacy manufacturer, which is dealerships, right? They, can get, they cannot get rid of them, essentially. Tesla has paid the way for startup companies because they've never had dealerships. How big, of a, how big of a stone is that to turn? And do you think they will ever be able to overcome that? Because as we know, dealerships don't want to sell electric cars. Exactly. So this is, a, from my understanding, one of the biggest obstacles because it has two consequences. The first one is, the big OEMs, they don't know their customers. 
they don't know their customers that's because it, they, that's they, they, they sell their cars to the dealers and the dealer is the interface to the customer. If you want to make use of different business models, if you want to create sales channels to your customers, if you want to sell digital content, you have to know them and the big car companies do not. Uh, and the second part is um, uh, what, what, what car companies call cost of retail. So the overall of money you have to spend just to sell your cars can be sky high. So in, in, in premium car companies, this goes up to 25 or more percent just cost of retail. If you, if you, if you would make it to go to, to a direct sales model, this can be half of it or even less. Uh, but because of the structure those companies have and the legacies, they will do very hard, if not impossible, to, to make this happen. So if it does because, I mean, let's say you're back in BMW, I don't mean to give you a heart attack, but let's, you know, how would you handle it? What would you, what would you do with these dealerships that, are, you just told my audience now, dealerships don't want to sell electric cars because they make money on maintenance and electric cars don't mean maintenance. Is there a way around it? Um, I don't have an easy answer to this point, uh, to be honest, because, um, um, First of all, to, to make future business models work, you have to implement a direct sales and the, the, the role will definitely change very much. A dealer who did an investment right now in a, in a complete 4S dealership will not be able to use this working with the company uh, doing this kind of new sales model. On the other hand, to conquer those new sales models, those, those new business models for the future, you will have to do it. Uh, so this is not an easy, an easy, easy way around it, and this is the reason why I think that one of the new companies, and I, be I believe, I deeply believe, it will be Faraday Future, will become the big player, the next big player in the mobility market, because this legacy is not around here, and you can build products and business models from scratch right away. Right. Well, what do you think about the efforts that legacy manufacturers are making? You know, like we just had Ford, uh, Mustang, and Mach-E come out and, you know, the overall uh, overall opinion is like, hey, maybe, maybe it's a real thing. Um, I mean, I think it is, but, you know, now the next step is to sell it. Do you think efforts like that would be rewarded, and do you think uh, they will still, you know, fall short of what the uh, what the you know Faraday futures and Bytons and Teslas of the world are are, are doing on the other on the, on the other side? So first of all, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate for to the e Mustang. This is a great job, I think, and this is a brave approach using the Mustang brand, which was we ate and, and very bold in the past uh, to, to convert this into uh, really future technologies. Very cool, cool job, guys. Um, and again, uh, you still will be able to sell electric cars like you, like you sell combustion engine cars today. The question is, will this be a sustainable business for the future? And this is what I'm doubt, to be honest, because uh, this will work for the next years, but, but over time, those cars will become a commodity and the difference will come from user experience and from digital. And I don't see any of the traditional car makers right now to really be prepared for this. Area. So you mentioned digital. What, what do you think as far as like, you know, obviously the maintenance is not going to be how dealerships going to be making money or anybody on electric cars. Do you think digital services is what maybe dealerships will be able to make money on once they sell that electric car and that will out offset their profits that they're no longer making on maintenance? Yes, this is definitely an, oppor an, an opportunity, but those will not be run by, 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 by dealerships from my understanding because as a, as a new mobility company you will contract uh, other companies to do your, your, your service and your after sales business man. And um, because it's not, as you said, not so difficult, it's, most of it is digital and if you have the, the direct connectivity to your cars and to your customers, it's not a big thing to, 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 to implement the service. Well, I'm definitely interested to see how it's going to play out. I'm kind of on the same. I, I don't know how it's going to go. They, something's got to give. But um, thanks so much for giving me the perspective. And, uh, you know, I'll see you next month. You're welcome. Thank you, Felix. All right. All right. Well, this was definitely an interesting discussion. Once again, he surprised me with a couple of things that he said. Um, the other ones I kind of already knew from our conversation from before. But as always, he's always very exciting. Uh, and, and, and I truly believe that he's one of the few people in this industry that can talk about these topics with the tons and tons of knowledge because he's been working for a legacy manufacturer, BMW. He's been, you know, doing startups like Byton and, and Fair Day Future. And, and I, I just I just so, so excited to have have them as a regular contributor to this channel. Thank you to those of you who are watching me live on Patreon. 
contributing to this channel. I really appreciate it. This is this and my sponsors like Climate Exchange is how um, I'm able to uh, travel to bring you all of the stories and of course do this every day. I don't know if you've noticed for the last over two years, every day I produce a video, no matter rain or shine, sick or not, here or across the globe. You can always get a story from me right here. Only more reasons to subscribe. If you haven't already, click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, I'm looking to the next time when Karsten is here and talk another uh, uh, exciting topic. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.